Am I audible? Am I visible? Okay. I did not ask that question for humor reasons. I'll explain. Let's say there is someone uh, among you who is uh, having some hearing disabilities. That person wouldn't mind whether I'm audible or not. But that person, for that person, I have to be visible, right? And that is accessibility. So uh, yeah, fun fact, uh, this presentation is about building accessible React apps. And this presentation is an accessible React app. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I hope you are having a lovely evening. I'm JJ, Jagdish Jayachandran. I'm, um, I'm a front-end developer, and I mostly work as an independent contractor for startups, uh, mostly in the early stages. Uh, my specialty is Electron.js, and I um, work with uh, both React and Vue. Uh, but personally, I uh, like React. React Meetup, right? React. OK, uh, let's begin. OK, uh, yeah, Saturday evening, talking about accessibility can be pretty daunting. So you guys want me to open with a joke? Yes, no? OK. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, give a refresher about uh, web accessibility. I'm not going to do a deep dive. Um, you guys know what accessibility is, right? So we'll talk about some key principles. And uh, I'll give a walkthrough about practical tips, how you can build your React components to be like uh, well and accessible. And uh, I'll introduce some libraries. And uh, sorry, you are waiting for a joke. OK. Uh, I'll make this very, very clear. Accessibility is not a joke. Yeah? Thanks, Dwight. Um, so what is accessibility? Like The casual definition is accessibility is the practice of designing and building web pages and web applications that can be uh, used by people with abilities and disabilities. So the uh, basic idea is to uh, bring an inclusive approach. Um, your website will be uh, viewed by anybody. You cannot control that. It, it, it can be a, a kid with some learning disabilities. It can be an elder with um, color blindness. Or it can be some people with, with uh, motor disabilities. Everybody should be able to use it. So it, it is ethically. Uh, it's an ethical responsibility for the company or the developers to make it inclusive. You know, it's it's www. It's World Wide Web. So anybody in the world should be able to use it. Uh, not sure about aliens, though, but it should be inclusive. And uh, how do we enforce this accessibility? Well, enforce is a pretty strong word, but there are guidelines. And these guidelines are set by none other than our own uh, W3C. So back in uh, the 1990s, they came up with something called the WCAG which actually defined that this is how your app should look like, whether it's a, your website or your application. And uh, they started grading on three levels, A, AA, and AAA. So A is the lowest type, and AA is the accepted standard. Like uh, if your uh, uh, site or app can cater to uh, people with certain disabilities, uh, certain accessibilities are present, then it is allowed. In most countries, your uh, app should meet these standards. And AAA is where you have very good standard. So uh, like I will personally rate uh, like uh, apps with better accessibility as RRR, which is like Oscar worthy. And uh, it's not about just uh, your keyboard navigation and, and mouse uh, alternatives. It is also uh, you know, catering to all the assistive technologies. Uh, for example, uh, do you guys remember JAWS, the screen reader? OK, that's back in 2010, it was like rage. When you uh, apply for a company, they will know uh, like, uh, do you know how to build a website that is compliant with 508? So uh, that screen reader is an assistive technology. Braille terminals are assistive technology. So when you are creating an app or when you are creating a website, uh, accessibility means you are catering to all of them, not just screens. And uh, it's not a one-time thing, right? Like, no website or no web app can be made 100% accessible. It's like the Murphy's Law of Testing. There is always one more bug. So there is always going to be something uh, uh, remaining. So the idea is here to make it continuous, like uh, not just with uh, testing uh, libraries, but also with real people. And uh, we saw the uh, what and how. So what's next? Sorry, um, he thinks he is invisible. OK, why is accessibility required? Because it's the right thing to do. Uh, as a developer, 
I mean, like as, as a society, we are moving towards more inclusive society. We are building more inclusive workspaces. So why not make our apps more inclusive, right? And also it is the law. So uh, USA has a uh, Pfizer 8 section of federal law. So if, uh, if your sites are not complained, you can actually be sued. Uh, Europe has EAA, which is Europe uh, Accessibility, European Accessibility Act. India has, uh, has something, I forgot what it is. <laughs> It's the uh, 2016 uh, Persons with Disability Act. So it doesn't enforce our apps to be compliant, but they have set guidelines and it, it's just a matter of time that uh, we have to comply with uh, these laws. Okay. Um, yeah, I know I've been talking a lot about accessibility, but is there any certain standard? Yes, WCAG has uh, set these guidelines that to call a page to be accessible, it has to be, uh, it has to have certain features. And this is, and those features are perceivable, operable, comprehensible, and robust. Just pronouncing these words made me feel like Sashi Tharoor. So, yeah, pardon my reconsideration. Okay, perceivable is uh, when the information that you are presenting should be taken by the user in any sense as possible, not just by looking at it. For example, if uh, there is a person who cannot see, visual disability, uh, we'll be enabling screen readers. If they're watching a video, we'll be having captions, closed caption, that's perceivable. Operable is the components that you are creating should be well operable, like navigation should be seamless. Um, the best example is using your uh, keyboard tabs to navigate. And comprehensible. So comprehensible is more about providing information right, not with flashing uh, images, mark cues. Do you guys remember mark cues? rage it shouldn't be like that when you present information in information it should be taken by the user in in the, the quickest way possible and the final uh feature is robust it's basically user agents are there right so when you are building an application any user agent should be able to take it be it browser uh tablet or your screen reader so back in um back in those days there were uh personal uh, digital assistants so when you make sure that this poor uh, is said that that makes your um, app more more accessible. Okay, uh, I don't have time for uh, showing uh, code uh, snippet, so I'll just quickly uh, go through this. So uh, we are building React applications nowadays, and uh, it is important that we have to make our uh, components well accessible. And the first thing is we start with semantic HTML. I'm sure we all do that, but we also need to understand why uh, we have to go with proper semantics. The reason is when you include a semantic tag, it inherently become accessible. When you declare it as a nav, my screen reader will tell the user, hey, this is a navigation. And uh, we build custom components like, like drop down. Uh, the drop down will have an input and then uh, it will have the drop down. So you cannot simply put a div for the input, make it editable and put more divs as list. It should be an input component. And the list should be a list component, um, um, LA uh, component. So uh, there will be inherent accessibility. When you press tab, the input will be focused. When you press down, the list will be focused. So that inherent accessibility comes when you use proper semantic HTMLs. And the second thing which uh, we do in terms of form is focus. Uh, nowadays, we don't really have to worry about focus, but um the focus take a hit when we introduce more components for example let's say there is a form and uh, we have set proper tab index and uh, i'm opening uh, a model on top of it what if there is a person who cannot read and he is, is using a screen reader the person press uh, tab then there will be a model in front of the person but the keyboard uh, tab will be you know uh, uh, cycling around form so there your experience will take a hit so that focus management is very important. And when uh, you are building uh, components, um, if you're using uh, toolkits like Chakra UI, you would have seen that they have added a lot of attention to uh, the uh, focus management in terms of closing your uh, close buttons or escape button. Uh, like when you open a model, how do we close it? Like without thinking, we press escape. How do we submit or like uh, give okay, we press enter button. So these are how we are used to it. But if you are not placing that uh, by putting a little effort, 
the accessibility is going to take a hit. And uh, I mentioned ref here. I had a, I have a code snippet, but a lot of people don't like to use ref. They say uh, that is like going back because ref makes a direct reference to DOM. So yeah, you don't have to use ref all the time. You can actually go for state-based focus handling. Um, and uh, area attribute and roles is something that we overlook all the time. Uh, area is uh, accessibility rich internet applications. You have seen it uh, in your um, code editor. When you miss uh, some of these tags, you will get all these curly underlines that will really annoy you, but they are actually very important. Um, okay, I'm going to skip this, but the idea here is uh, these area attributes tell the user what kind of elements that we are, uh, you know, like uh, going through. And uh, one example I have given here is uh, the dynamic content update. So we build a lot of dynamic applications, especially chat related, AA related. So how do you make accessible is there is a nice tag called area live that will actually go back and tell the user that, hey, there is a dynamic content which got popped up. So it's pretty interesting. I will try to uh, uh, link the snippets. You can have a look. And um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys are like motivated to build uh, accessibility rich applications, but if um, you are, you can check out this library. So they won't actually help you to build these applications, but it is more about uh, throwing warnings and uh, giving you some heads up. So uh, React Acts is something that uh, you can install and it will show all the warnings in your console. Um, and this ESLint plugin, the second one, uh, this is something that you can use when you are building your own application, but it won't work in a team setup because it basically shows this uh, warnings in your editor. And uh, React ALA only is something uh, that I have uh, used a lot, but uh, again, it, it provides warning uh, in your console. Uh, the important thing is like you have to give a heads up to your QV or else they'll rise like 100 bucks saying like console errors are coming. Uh, but React AL only is unfortunately uh, deprecated. Uh, they have introduced uh, Axcore. So same uh, concept. You can um, just add it to your library, sorry, add it to your application, and then you can find anything that is missing um, will be shown as warning. The best part is uh, you can actually um, uh, customize it. So if you don't want to, uh, like if you are very, very sure that this application will not be used by certain people with certain disabilities, you can uh, disable that. Okay. Um, yeah, just I'll uh, I'm going to do a quick recap. Um, you, what is web access accessibility and why it is important? What are the uh, features, the poor features, and uh, how we can make sure that our component is accessible by in including semantic components, uh, making sure we are handling the focus and uh, making sure we are adding area attributes and roles and uh, some libraries that you can check. So yeah, the timer is red, so I'll stop here and. Uh, we can, um, like if you have any questions,